Today we're going to take this cast iron skillet, which is a Lodge brand, 3SK model, made in the USA. This is an antique shop find, it was $5. And I'm going to try and reproduce the effect that time will have and use will have on a cast iron frying pan or skillet and smooth everything with the goal of having this perform just as good or better than my antique cast iron skillet. And to prove that at the very end of this video, I'm going to do a competition, a flip off, if you want to call it that, and see how well this one actually performs. So join me. Before we start into this, let me show you how rough the surface really is right now. Here you can see the parting lines from the mold. And of all the surfaces, the interior seems the worst. Now I have another video that I just finished and I'll put the link above here. And in that video, I experimented with a couple different finishes to see which one would perform the best. On this particular uh, frying pan, I'd like to do something a little bit different, but I will do all the same steps to get to a final, very smooth finish. And I'll even take it further and do all the interior, all the edges. I really want to get as close to the antique look as, as possible and the function of an antique as well. And what I mean by that is that it's really a true non-stick surface. Nothing to hold up on or get held up on. And it's very easy to clean these surfaces as well. So here's a quick look at what we're trying to achieve. Smooth rounded edges on the interior, the entire surface on the interior. We have a smooth handle as well. Around the perimeter on the outside, it's not particularly smooth, but it is definitely better than my starting point with the lodge and the bottom is smooth as well. So I'm going to try and achieve all of those goals on this lodge small skillet. Well guys, the small sander is really good, except for I only have certain grits available uh, right now, which is 120 and 240, I believe, for this sander. And I really didn't do uh, well enough for some of the deep pitting that I had on this pan. So I had to switch over to this guy here. And if you're going to do this, use it very gently because you're going to dig into the pan very easily. And you're going to leave some uh, deep scoring marks in there. So I was very gentle with it and I took my time. And I went back with this guy afterward. And I've done a little bit of hand sanding and then I'll show you a little bit more of those steps. Uh, obviously, it's very basic but uh, you just work your way through the grits. So you might be asking yourself, well, why am I gonna spend so much time doing this? Uh, well, there's a few good reasons that I can think of. One is that it makes it very easy to clean. So after you've done your seasoning, uh, you're gonna be able to run this under some hot water and basically have to do no cleaning after that whatsoever. Just re-oil the surface and you're good to go. Uh, if you had a really rough surface, it doesn't always work out that way. You Sometimes you need to use paper towel, uh, salt, for example, to kind of um, eat away at the food that's built up. And you shouldn't really need to do that with a really smooth surface. Another reason is it does help with the non-stick properties. So if you have less surface area, if you have a smooth surface, you're going to have a lot less surface area in contact with the food product that you're cooking. And that generally means that you'll have less friction and less sticking. And the last benefit is not something I've tested. But what I've seen in other videos and that's that you should be able to use a metal spatula and some people will say well never use a metal spatula on a cast iron frying pan um, but I've seen people do it and they do it confidently and that's because they have a well seasoned cast iron pan so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for something you've just seasoned but if you have, um, have been using it for quite a while you should be able to use a metal spatula or metal utensil without causing too much damage So the interesting part about this cast iron pan is that uh, I bought it in an antique shop. Now, not all antique shops actually carry antiques, but uh, this one didn't have any seasoning on it. And I have no idea how to identify the age of a cast iron skillet like this. So uh, if anybody has a clue as to how to identify the age, um, I don't believe personally that this one is very old at all. It's probably fairly new and just has never been used. But if you could shed some light on that and you have an idea, and please put it in the comments below. So 
So after all of those sanding steps, this is the result you should expect to see. This is about two hours worth of work to get to this point. Uh, now I could have taken it even further. You can see some of the deep pits in here from the casting process, but um, it's really the most important part is to get the bottom smooth, the sides next, and then everything else is really more aesthetics and just for the feel and look of an antique. I flattened the bottom uh, as much as I thought was necessary and I've hollowed out the little bit extra in the middle to make sure that it didn't teeter right from the center point. And one thing with cast iron or any metal really when you heat it um, is that it will warp. So it's, it's important to keep the perimeter in contact all the time with the cooking surface. And if it were to warp, this may bulge out slightly. So I think uh, this will address that issue potentially. So this is the first lodge that I've owned and uh, it has this ring around the perimeter here. If anybody has an idea as to what the purpose of this ring is for, then uh, let me know in the comments below. Now in my last video, I did not include the seasoning process in it and I'm gonna do the exact same with this one. I'm gonna include three links below uh, of good seasoning videos and then I'm gonna address that in a future video um, to show exactly what seasoning process is really the best and which oil is really the best out of all the choices that you have. So that'll be an upcoming video, but for now, I'm gonna skip the seasoning process as far as the video is concerned, and I'll bring you back uh, showing the comparison of how they look after this one has been seasoned. So after six coats, you should expect to see this uh, nice golden color develop. And then of course, over time, you should get to a much dark, darker, richer color. Um, but this is really nice. Uh, this is a non-stick surface already. I've already tried this and it seems to work very well. The bottom is coated uh, in the same amount of coats as well. So all that's left to do is to try this against this and see which one performs better. I tried olive oil below the butter to see if that made a difference. I had seen in a video that that did uh, improve the nonstick properties of a cast iron pen. However, in this test, it was the only one that I had where I had sticking on each pen. So uh, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I have no clue. It's the first time I've ever done it. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure how it would affect the flavor, but uh, I won't be doing it again anytime soon. So I wanted to perform multiple tests to have a better overall idea of the performance of each pan. And the results show that each performed about the same, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. I thought the really smooth skillet would have performed a little bit better, but it's not bad because uh, to be honest with you, it really hasn't been used that long. So as it builds up more seasoning, it should continue to perform better and better and surpass that antique skillet. So I hope everyone found this video to be helpful. So if you like the video, 
don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up, ring the bell, and please leave a comment. Thanks for watching.